Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to a new video. So in this one, I'm going to be covering a brand new Facebook ad testing strategy, perfect for the beginner. So it's really awesome to see. In fact, there's a lot of people getting started on Shopify within e-commerce. Um, now is a great time as well, if you ask me, for a couple of reasons. Number one, obviously things are somewhat starting to return to normal um, since the whole virus and lockdown. Um, and number two, we're coming up to Q4, which is typically the most profitable time of year for any kind of online or e-commerce business. So now is a great time. So if you are a beginner then, complete your store and you're ready to get started with Facebook ads, this is going to be the perfect place for you to start. Or perhaps you've been running some ads, you've tested a product or two and not quite seen the results you hoped for, then I recommend giving this strategy a go. Just make sure you stay tuned for the whole video because not only am I going to show you the strategy as well, but I like to explain the why um, behind things and why it actually works to help you kind of grasp that understanding of Facebook ads. Before we jump into it though, a couple of quick things. Number one, this keynote is downloadable. So if you want to get yourself a copy of what I'm about to show you for free, can do so just check out the first link in the description below and secondly then if you enjoy this video and you're going to try this strategy out yourself um, please do make sure you hit that like button um, if you enjoy my content please do make sure you subscribe as well of course um, and any questions on this or anything for that matter just make sure you comment them down below um, i do read every single comment so if there's something you want to ask me i will see it and i will respond to you with that being said thanks for tuning in i hope you enjoy it and let's jump straight into it so this is the strategy itself i'm going to start the video off just by explaining exactly how it works. I'm um, just going through it step by step. Um, and then to kind of the second half of the video, if you like, I'm just gonna explain um, where this strategy come about, why it works, and the understanding, the hows and whys behind it, basically. So first of all, we're gonna be starting with three different conversion campaigns. Now, the amount of campaigns you run is completely relative to how many products you want to test. So as a kind of rough rule of thumb, I suggest a minimum of three products. If you wanna test four products or five products, that's fine. Just make sure you have one product per campaign. Each campaign is gonna be a CBO campaign. The reason being is because we're gonna let Facebook choose and decide which ad set is the best. And the main kind of differentiating factor between ad sets is going to be the audience size. From past experience, there's kind of like two or three main things that really influence how well an ad set performs um, outside of the actual product and creative itself. And they tend to be the actual audience size the targeting and then your budget as well. So as you can see, I have picked three different products here. These are just example products. I'm not saying they're good products. I'm not saying they're bad products. It's just to illustrate how the setup of this strategy works. Each campaign is gonna be a CBO. Each campaign is gonna be a purchase objective. Um, at the beginning, unless you're 100% confident of who your ideal um, market bases, your customer base, sorry, um, in terms of age and gender, then I want you to go broad um, in these two factors. So 18 to 65 plus um, and male and female too. In terms of placements, then again, these are gonna be uniform throughout the campaigns. Um, past experience, news feeds and marketplace have always performed the best for me. Um, if I had to guess, I would say, number one, news feeds are always the kind of biggest space, biggest area on somebody's mobile device or desktop. Therefore, the chances, the hit rate of somebody actually seeing and noticing your ad is obviously going to be very high. Same for marketplace. The only difference being is when people are on the marketplace, they're already kind of in that buying mood. They're already ready to spend money more so than they are on news feeds. Obviously, as somebody's scrolling through their news feed, they're not necessarily looking for something to buy. Um, they're just going to be looking at whatever's on their news feed, pass and time, whatever it is. But people will typically go into the marketplace when they're looking for something to buy. So if you put the right product in front of them, they probably already have their payment information with them, etc. They're just more in that buying mood, which you may have heard me speak about um, in past videos. The daily budget per campaign is going to be £10. The reason I choose £10 is because it's a bit higher than the typical starting point. Most people start with $5 or £5 per day. Facebook ads being a bidding platform, obviously then people who have a higher budget will tend to win the auction that bit more. So by going a bit higher than that £10, you increase your chances um, of getting the best selection of your audience basically. So £10 per day per CBO campaign. In each CBO campaign then there's gonna be three ad sets. All three of these ad sets are the same up until this point. So all three of the ad sets are purchased, they're 18 to 65, they're male plus female, they're newsfeed and marketplace, and then obviously the daily budget is covered within the CBO campaign. But this is where they start to differentiate and I'm gonna explain the reasons why. So three ad sets per CBO campaign. Ad set number one is gonna have an audience size of in and around 250K. So it doesn't obviously have to be 250K spot on. Anywhere from say 200 to 300K is fine. Ad set number two, in and around 500K. 
and then ad set number three, one million. Now these audience sizes aren't chosen at random. The reason why they work so well is because you're covering all of the bases. Now I haven't gone above one million. Some people say go for like two, three, four, five million, which is absolutely fine. However, I prefer to go for those large audience sizes when I'm spending a bit more money. In the beginning, if I'm using small budgets like 10 pound per day, I go for smaller audience sizes to kind of match the budget. But what I'm trying to basically say is by having different ad sets with different audience sizes, then we're gonna cover all bases. And because Facebook is very much a numbers game, it makes it really easy to compare ad sets against each other, it makes it really easy to run split tests like this, so that when we do, as long as we keep all the other kind of um, factors the same, then it's a fair test. We're comparing apples against apples. The clear best performers will kind of highlight themselves in the numbers, so we'll have cheaper cost per link clicks, they'll have more purchases, etc. And then when we move on to actually scaling, we can make sure that we spend um, more of our budget and double down on those areas that are essentially working. Earlier on in the video, you may have heard me mention those three kind of key influencers that impact the results of your ads outside of actually the um, products that you pick, obviously. Um, number one was the budget, number two was the targeting. When I say targeting, I mean the actual interests. Um, and then number three was the audience size. And that's the reason why this testing strategy works so well is because outside of those three biggest influencers, everything is kept the same. So we're only testing those three things. So essentially, once we finish running this test, we will know the best audience size to target, we'll know the best interests to target, and then all we simply have to do is change our budget accordingly and obviously put more money into those ad sets that are actually working the best. In terms of how much time you run this particular test for, I recommend five days as minimum. I always run my tests for five days, especially if they're conversion campaigns. I usually find conversion campaigns work better the longer you leave them obviously through the learning phase the more time they have to kind of gather data and um, the more efficient they become so as a minimum recommendation then five days after those five days and then pause evaluate the results um, and then choose obviously which ones you're going to scale from there in terms of when it comes to evaluating the results and i get this question every single time what sort of numbers should we be looking at um, what you want to do is think of it as like a hierarchy if that's the right word start at the top at the most valuable thing and then work your way down depending on what's happened depending on what the results produce Produce. So obviously the most valuable thing is a purchase. If you start getting purchases from particular ad sets, that's a great sign. If you don't get purchases, work your next way down to obviously initiate checkout, um, add payment info, sorry, then initiate checkout, then add to cart, view content, etc. If you don't get any of those, then start looking at things like your quality rankings, start looking at things like your cost per link click. What you want to be keeping in mind is how interested is this particular audience in this product. And obviously the more interested an audience is, um, the higher life likely chance if that makes sense you have of succeeding and actually making sales and obviously turning a profit so that's the kind of underlying question you need to keep asking yourself is how interested in this audience and then if somebody was interested in the audience what kind of things would you be seeing you'd be seeing cheaper cost per link clicks you'd see higher quality rankings you'll see add to carts etc purchases and so on and with that being said then guys i think everything is just about being explained if there's anything you're not sure on i've said it before but just make sure you leave your questions down below i'll answer every single one um, and apart from that then thanks for watching i really do appreciate the support on the channel um, if you enjoyed the video please do make sure you hit that like button please do make sure you subscribe as well for regular content if you want to follow me on instagram my username is jack kitchener uk um, and then just in case you didn't know um, i do run a course called the ecom academy um, everything is shown to you on video step by step it does come with my full support and guidance through email too um, if you want to hop on a call and just discuss any questions you have if you're interested in joining we can do that for free as well um, so for more information check out the link in the video description below or simply leave a comment below too um, and i can get back to you that way and with that being said guys thanks for watching um, and i'll see you in the next one